Hi, everybody. Welcome, wherever you may be, whatever time you may be watching this. I'm glad you're joining in over the wonders and marvels of technology of the internet. But uh, today we have a special day. We celebrate the feast of the body and blood of our Lord. Back in the day, it was called Corpus Christi. If you want to use the old Latin terminology, which means the body of Christ. But now we translate it and the body and blood of, of, of Christ. Okay. So with that, as you prepare yourselves, because we're so privileged and unworthy as may be to receive the Lord Jesus each time we come to Mass, when you, whoever you may be watching this with, just share if you have any one member you have from your first communion, whatever that may be. Now, it doesn't have to be anything holy. It could be your party, it could be your, what you wore, whatever it may be. Something when you think about your first communion. All right? So with that, let's begin our celebration. And we'll begin with music. RJ. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Come oh, and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of As we gather this beautiful day, we offer praying for your needs, your intentions, but in a very special way, I'd like to remember in our prayers the, one of the parishioners of St. Teresa. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace, peace, and love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. We celebrate this great day as we celebrate the feast of the body and blood of Christ that we are so privileged and honored to receive. Let's prepare ourselves then, unworthy as may be, but God loves us and cares for us and he forgives us of our sin. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised those who eat my body, drink my blood, shall live forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are always and ever our good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good
pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with the God the Father, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying into the desert so as to test you by affliction and to find out whether or not whether it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its certain serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought you forth water for you from the flinty rock, and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. strengthen the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord Jerusalem, hallelujah. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? 
the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body. For we all partake the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound, a victim willing, Paschal lamb, its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father's scent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints the lowest, where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests who be. Amen. Alleluia. I need the book. I need the book. Leave it there. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. With Our reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh drinks my blood as eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jake Booth was a 35-year-old Army vet, former sheriff deputy in Collier County here in Florida. Well, he was hospitalized back in February with a bad case of bronchitis, then turned to double pneumonia. To make matters worse, some days later, he suffered a heart attack, and he's placed in a medically induced coma. He was in that coma for 48 days, unconscious, lying there. Finally, after 48 days, he, uh, he awoke. And his first words that he uttered after being 48 days in a, uh, in a coma, this was his very first wor words. I want Taco Bell. That's him right there. After 48 days, huh? He said it out loud, I want Taco Bell. His brother Jason was there and said, yep, 
As he told USA Today, that was the very first thing he said, I want Taco Bell. And to make sure they asked him, Jason, do you want Taco Bell? And he answered affirmatively, yes. Well, unfortunately he had to wait another 22 more days before he was strong enough to eat solid food. And so he celebrated by chowing down on eight and a half crunchy tacos. His friend said, his brother added, we've all been waiting an entire month for him to eat those tacos. It was symbolic of the entire thing. More of a metaphor of him having a woke up and being given a second chance at life. Wow. I, it's hard for me to comprehend that the very first thing I would say after being in a coma for 48 days is that I want Taco Bell. Please, no offense, Taco Bell, but that's not what I would think or hope is on my mind. What would you say? What would you want? What is your deeper desires, perhaps for some family, you know, members, okay? But do you long to receive Jesus? Hmm? Do you have a hunger for these beautiful words in our gospel? Because unless you eat my bed, eat my flesh, drink my blood, you won't have eternal life. Hmm? Whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, remains in me and I in him. Last week, and we had some crazy weather, didn't we? If you remember, it seems like a long time ago already. Oh, it rained. It was that tropical storm. We got the little bit of the tail of it, I guess. Oh, the rain poured down. Not only that, um, there was a tornado warning. And so I was shocked, stunned, pleasantly surprised to see how many people actually came to Mass on, on, that, on that Saturday afternoon. I'm thinking, my gosh, why would you come? I mean, there are many reasons why I think you should have stayed, you know, most people should have stayed home. One, we're not out of the woods yet with this, you know, the virus. That's always a present threat. I know people take that very seriously. You've got to be careful. That's one reason, of course. And the bishop lifted the obligation that, you know, as Catholics, we take very seriously attending church on Sunday under pain of sin. And our Bishop Noon said, it's lifted. You do not have to be physically present to come to Mass. You can miss Mass and still be in good standing. And then we have that rain and the tornado warning, and yet a good number of people came. Anyway, I had this conversation with one of our meetings and one of our ladies who, who actually came to Mass. I asked her point blank, why did you come? You know, it's a little bit of, you put yourself at risk. She's sort of literally surprised, like, why would I even ask a question? I mean, why would I come? She said, because I miss Jesus. I want to receive the Holy Eucharist. That's why I came. Wow. Hmm. That's faith. But only faith is that shows the value hmm, of what's important. Because I want to receive Jesus. And during this pandemic virus, when the, our church was closed, well, about a month and a half, I guess, I mean, how long it was, one of the biggest short, you know, the shortfalls of it, what people lacked, what people longed for, of course, not being able to come together on Sunday, they missed seeing people, of course, the music, but what, what most people said over, overwhelmingly, not being able to receive Holy Communion. Because hmm? that's really who we are as our faith with our church. It makes us special, different, unique. Some years ago, there was a video, and it was, um, had a video of that Pentecostal preacher, faith healer. I mean, you might have heard of him, Benny Hinn, all right? Maybe Benny's, I believe he's still on those TV, on the religious stations, if you look. In fact, years ago, he had a church actually right here in Orlando. Um, anyway, he purports to have the gift of healing, but let me tell you what he's, what he said, and we had it on video, is shocking, okay? That's Benny Hinn. He himself is a Pentecostal. And um, he made the statement. Mm -hmm. He said that um, to his Pentecostal, Pentecostal audience he's speaking to, that Catholics experience more miracles than Pentecostals. You know, we don't usually speak a lot about healing, and, you know, that's not sort of the main focus, but as, as it would be for Pentecostals. And he said, why is that? He said, amazingly, he credits 
This is the Catholic belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. There's more healings in the Catholic Church because of their belief in the Holy Eucharist. He said they just released a study, I don't know what study that was, that more people are healed in a Catholic church than Pentecostal churches. He says, why, he said? He said, I think it's clear. Because Catholic people revere the Eucharist. And Ben, I said, I only wish that were true as you, as you think it is. None of us revere the Eucharist as we should. Because that is the body and blood of Christ, and eats my body, drinks my blood, shall have life within you. Mm -hmm. Many more people get healed in a Catholic church than during communion than, than the Pentecostals. He says, because to us, it's symbolic. And then Benny Hinn, a Pentecostal, he begins defending the real presence. He said, Jesus didn't say, this is symb symbolic of my body. He said, this is symbolic of my blood. He said, this is my body. This is my blood. And that's from Benny Hinn, the Pentecostal. Again, one would scratch their head and say, well, Benny, if you believe that, then you would think you'd become Catholic, but that's a whole different discussion, a whole different argument. But imagine, it takes him, a Pentecostal, to tell his people that more miracles, more healings, is because we revere the Holy Eucharist. And I hope that be true, that we long to receive Jesus, because we want Jesus to abide in me to abide in you, to live within us. That is the great precious gift that God gives us. To about revering, let's share a little story from the 13th century, St. Anthony. In fact, um, that's his statue. Can you put the camera in that statue right there? Can you flip it right behind you? There's a, that's St. Anthony, by the way, in the 13th century. It looks like St. Francis, doesn't he? But the difference, he doesn't have animals, and Anthony's typically carrying the Christ child. But anyway, St. Anthony, he himself possessed a great zeal for the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. And one day he heard this fellow there in his, his town named Bononillo, who did not share the same belief. In fact, Bononillo openly mocked people who believed that Jesus was truly present under the appearance of bread and wine. Oh, Anthony tried to, you know, convince him, gave proof from Scripture like we read today. But the man, he was stubborn as a mule. Well, Anthony received an, received an inspiration. He challenged the wealthy, the wealthy merchant. He said, um, Mr. Bonillo, if the mule you ride adore the, the body of Christ in the Eucharist, would you believe then in the truth of the Blessed Sacrament? Bonillo agreed. He said, okay, I'll agree. They said, but Bonillo said, okay, I'm going to raise the stakes. I'm going to starve my mule for three days and then bring it to the town square. Anthony, you bring the Blessed Sacrament to the same square. Then the mule will be put in front of a pile of hay, and Anthony, you stand a few yards away, and we shall see what happens next. Where will the mule go? To the hay or to the Lord Jesus? And he said, you're on. So the next three days, as they starved the mule, St. Anthony prayed, and he himself fasted. Well, the day came three days later, the town was filled with people already curious to see what's going to happen. Hmm? Anyway, they brought the mule out who hadn't eaten nothing, hmm? who was hungry, hmm? starving. Anyway, Bonito brought the, um, there's the mule right with the hay, right you see right there. He placed hay in front of the, the mule's nose. And the mule didn't nibble, didn't budge at all. Then St. Anthony, uh, across the way, a few distances away, held up the Holy Eucharist. Defying all odds, the mule turned his head and walked over to St. Anthony. And when the mule was close, the animal bent his front legs and kneeled in adoration. Wow. We should have that same faith, that same respect, that same awe. How blessed we are that we can receive Jesus every time we come to Mass. And when we come to church, it's not just a building, it's not just a hall, it's not just because you have nice stained glass with windows or statues that makes it special, because we have the tabernacle where Jesus is, and that we love and revere him. So thank the Lord for this precious gift. 
and ask the Lord that he may increase our faith, increase our reverence. And we realize how privileged, how blessed we are that we get to receive his body and his blood. Because when we receive this, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again in the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. And as we stand now before a loving, gracious Father, with great trust and confidence, we present these, our needs. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop John, that they and all our church leaders be guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the wonderful people of St. Teresa, that we live lives guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. May the spirit of wisdom and understanding guide our president, government leaders, and all world leaders as we face the challenge of the pa pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the spirit of compassion embrace all those who serve us during this pandemic and those serving in our social ministry department as we care for our guests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For those afflicted by the pandemic, those who lost their jobs, the sick and those who lost their lives, may they be comforted and strengthened by God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. We pause for a few moments to offer our personal needs and our mass intentions. We just pray also for our hurting and wounded nation. We pray, Lord, that you may things get back to a sensibility, order, and justice, that we learn how to live together as your children. We need your peace and your grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. Father, please hear these prayers. We come before you. We are in need of your grace, your help. Bless us now with, as you bless us with the gift of your Son, Jesus, the bread of life. For we listen to you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Again, anyway, thank you for all those who continue to support our, our work, our mission to help us keep our doors open, the lights on, to support our outreach, to keep feeding and take care of the poor and the needy. I thank you so much for that. Many ways you can help, I suggest giving online or through your bank, or if you like, drop off the envelopes. Even if you're far away, if you'd like to help us, just mail it. We receive your letters and mail. We're happy to receive it. Thank you for your kindness and generosity, making all things possible. That's fine, I can break it down. Wait. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six.
six, okay? Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, your goodness we receive through the bread we offer, which earth has given you, and hands have made. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, your goodness we receive from the wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hand. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of all service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in unity of single person, but a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, the unity in substance and the equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name, the name of the Lord, the Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior of the world, by the cross and resurrection, you have set, set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, a spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thank you for joining us 
online. And this opportunity, probably there's a little bit of pang or disappointment that you're unable to receive the Lord Jesus. But together, as we join together, we make a spiritual act of communion. Oh, Lord Jesus, have been reminded of this precious gift and hearing your, your wonderful, exciting words that you promise that whoever eats my body, drinks my blood, who abides in me and I in him and I in her. Lord, I, it's not possible right now for, for me to receive you, Lord, although I love to or wish I could. But I no doubt that you will see the intention and love of my heart, that you will come visit me, that you will grace me with your holy presence. And once again, that you will still abide with me, you still unite yourself with me as well. Lord, so come fill my heart, not as perfect as I like it to be, but you understand my weakness, you understand my sinfulness, and yet you'll never stop loving me. So come, Lord Jesus, I need your grace. Especially now in the face of the world, I come discouraged and frightened and fearful. Help me, Lord, I need you to stand up for the truth and stand up for my convictions and trust that all things work to good for those that love you. Come, Lord Jesus, may you find a home in my heart.
Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we delight in it for all eternity and that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age, by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our message ended. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, RJ. Thank you, Mark, for your music providing us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marshall, for organizing your slides. Thank you, Mr. Chuck, for reading so eloquently. Thank you, Robert, for your support, as always. And again, we thank Greg from Fixit Check for a great job in making this possible for us. Without them, there is no mass on, on the internet. So thank you so much. Right here in Bellevue, Fixit Check. Thank you so much. Bless you all.